Hi, good morning, students. How all of you are fine? In the previous class, we have been just discussing about the question patterns. Then we spoke about the different characters, important characters of the play. Followed by we discussed about the theme, the subplot. The plot and the subplot we discussed there. We said about there are many plots. Maybe let's say the first one is the main plot, then subplot, theme, different themes were there. These were the some of the thing points we discussed in the previous class. Lastly, I said today always we will be just directly starting with our drama. As I have told you, the drama what we are going to study is The Tempest, written by William Shakespeare. Now in the first act, first scene, that is just we are right, uh, studying the point, let's see what is or how the drama is opening here. We are going to see a shipwreck. The drama is opening up with the scene of a shipwreck. What do you mean by a shipwreck? In simple words, if you say it is an accident, ship accident that is taking place. In this context, of course, we are not given any reference about how it is going to take place in the first scene. We are just seeing a shipwreck. On the board, a, sh a ship at the sea, that is what we are going to see. A storm with thunder and lightning is taking place. The atmosphere is created there. Thunder and lightning taking place, heavy storm, big rain, let us take it, thunderstorm and rain. So totally a very ferocious atmosphere is created. A very frightening scene is created. Now there we will see who are the people present there. Of course, as we are seeing, it is a ship. Naturally, there should be a captain. Captain of the ship is there. A second person what we are introduced is Boson. Of course, you have to pay attention to that word. Boson, probably you might be hearing for the first time that word. B O A T S W A I N, it is written. Though quite many may read it as Boswain and all those This word has to be said as Boson. Who is a Boson? He is a subordinate officer of the ship, sometime also in charge of the stores. So he is the person who is known as Bosa. Who is he? A subordinate officer of the ship. Probably he is also given the in charge of the storerooms of the ship. So he is Bosa. So Bosa is present there. Along with him there is captain or the master. He is introduced as the master. Master of the ship. Now a conversation is taking place between these two people. Bosa and the master. Now of course there are many people present on the ship there, but we are just standing off with these two people. Now who is the master? As I said, the master. He is the commander of the merchant ship. So master is known as a commander of the merchant ship. So he is an officer, he is the bosun. Commander and the officer. Commander is talking to his officer. Maybe subordinate let's put it. So the master is calling Boson. Here master, what's here? Here master, what's here? Now I'm present here. What's here? Now the words which we are using. These words what we are hearing 
we need to pay attention to this one. These are not the ordinary casual words what we are using. Then what is this one? So I am speaking about the conversation between the master and bosom. So what's here? Now here it has got a different meaning. How are things going on? That is the meaning of that. So when he say, what's here? How things are going on? That is he means by that one. So captain is asking, the master, how is the things going on? How are the things going on? Is everything all right? So what's here? So when as we are speaking in the normal conversation, what's here? Cheerful. Not exactly that is what is meant by this one here. So here, how are things going on? Is everything under control? That is what he means by that one. Master, good. Speak to the mariners. So now master is advising him. Bosom, please speak to the mariners. Fall to you. Fall to it. Yali, yali. Or we run ourselves aground. Yali, yali. Or we run ourselves aground. Bister, bister. Now again, these words are not commonly so used. What is exactly this yali? Yali is a meaning, it's already given there. Promptly. So he means to say that fall briskly, fall quickly into actions. Don't delay yourself. Certain conditions are there where we have to be very quick. We need to act very quickly, very fastly. Like what is called slow and steady and all those things. Those kind of things does not work out while we are doing some uh, emergency works, let's say. So here he says, speak to the mariners. Now there was a word which is good. Now when he asks, he does not mean that good, everything is going on well. No, that is not exactly the meaning of the word that good is referred there. Good, there exactly just mean that here I am. Yes sir, that is the meaning. So he says, okay, then speak to the mariners. Tell them to act quickly, work fast, encourage them, support them. If not, we ourselves, we run ourselves aground, run ourselves aground. What do you mean by that? We run ourselves aground. The ship getting stuck in the sea. So there is a possibility that if the ship moves like this and if we don't take action, the probably we will go to a shallow land and there we may get stuck into the sand. That we cannot our, uh, let ourselves to happen that way. Bister, bister. Arouse quickly. Bister means arouse. Stimulate. Awake from sleep. So we need to say that. Awake from the sleep. Be quick in acting. So we cannot just let ourselves to go slow and steady and all those things. Be quick. Act immediately. And as he speaks. Mariners and the sailors, those who are there, all the mariners, all the workers on the ship, they all come there. So, Boston addresses them. Hi, my hearts. Hi, my hearts. My cheerful fellows. So, he is addressing a way in which he can encourage those people. My jolly fellows. My good friends. Smartly, my lords. Cheerly, cheerly, my hearts. Cheerly, cheerly, my hearts. So addressing them. Cheerfully, my smart fellows, my smartly lads. Or even my, let us say, now just simply let us say, now my jolly fellows. My jolly, happy friends, my friends, my jolly fellows. Smartly, my lads. Lads, my lads, my kids, my boys. Addressing them. My boys, please be quick in acting. Be smart. This is not the time to sleep and take rest. No, be my quick, be my lads. Carefully remove the top sails. So he's telling, remove the top sails. Now when I say about the sails, probably you might have seen the images of ships with the sails. A piece of clothes, 
so those thing that is uh, meant for taking the wind make the ship to sail smoothly so is addressing the mariners or the sailors to remove some of the sails the top sail please remove it carefully remove the top sail follow the directions issued by the captain so follow the directions given by the captain so if you just act in your own ways that may not be a good thing that is not the proper things to be done so follow the instruction directions given by the captain it does not matter if the wind blows the hardest here it is mentioned there taking the top sails tend to the master's whistle tend to the master's whistle attend to the pay attention to the master's whistle master's whistle here it means give attention to the commands given by him orders given by the captain so attend to his directions blow till thou burst thy wind thou burst thy winds now he is giving a command or he is challenging the wind you may blow at any hour at any strength it doesn't care till the wind pipes break that is generally when we speak about the wind pipe and all those in terms of human beings so you may blow hard any amount of strength you may use it it does not matter to us what matters for us is if a room enough there is a small sentence given if room enough if room enough means the mariners are not afraid of the wind the strength of the wind is not a problem for the mariners so long as they are in the deep sea they know that they can maneuver the ship into the direction in which they are or which they want always the problem arises when they are close to the shore where the depth of the water is very low the shallow waters if it is there is a problem that they can sink into the sand they get stuck into the sand that is not a good sign for us that is what he said blow till the burst thy wind till your any energy any amount of energy you may use it in blowing the wind but that does not matter to us that is not a problem for us but problem for us is that if there is no sufficient place if we are close to the land if we are close to the shore there is a possibility that we may get stuck into the uh, what is called onto the shallow area so that we shall not let it happen we shall not let it happen that we get stuck so please keep in mind this lines tend to the master's whistle blow till the burst thy wind if room enough so mariners are not at all afraid if room enough it is given there so long as we have room that is enough space to maneuver the ship without getting it stuck into the shallow waters so so long as we have got the uh, deep water we have no, nothing to fear we can just control the ship properly that is exactly what he says so that was the conversation between boston and the mariners boston is encouraging supporting the sailors to hold firm in their courage act uh, quickly so that is what the first command now when we are listening to these words i said these are not the so commonly or so frequently used words now if that is not the case then what is the reason for this these are typically the words used by shakespeare what is the reason that shakespeare gives this one now this is the words of the mariners these are the words typically used by the mariners seafaring men so they are using this words now in this play in the opening scene shakespeare wants to create an atmosphere that is typically typically happening in the sea so he wants to give the atmosphere create such an atmosphere that is typically taking place in the water in the sea so the details of the shipwreck is given in such a way that it creates or even it shows the knowledge that shakespeare has got on these matters now how does he learn all these things all these words and all these things are learned actually just as he kept open his ears and eyes he listens he sees and from there he gets all these words 
from the local conversations with seamen, the sailors, mariners and all those things. When they are using this kind of dialogue, he picked up all these things. And this dialogue is used here to create an atmosphere. So these are all typical words that are used by the sailors, mariners, boatswain, captains and all those people. They use while they are on a voyage. So that is typical words they are using here. Now, after this one, all of a sudden, there comes some of the travelers, those who are on the boards. So comes here, Alonso, Sebastian, Antonio, Ferdinand, Gonzalo and others. Now, who are these people? Alonso, as we have already seen in the introduction, the main character, King of Naples, Sebastian, his brother, Antonio, the wrong duke, who has sent out Prospero from his own dukedom. Ferdinand, the son of Alonso, Gonzalo, the counselor. So all these very prominent people are there on the ship. So they all come there. So if these prominent people are there on the ship, naturally they feel that they have to be protected. So now let's see their interference with this seafaring men or bosun or the captain and all those things. Good bosun. Good bosun. Have care. Now, this is something which these people, they don't like it. Nobody likes this. Sir. When we are doing some job properly, decently, our work with so much sincerity and dedication, somebody else comes there and interferes with our work. No, that may not be a happy thing. So, good person, have care, be careful, advising him what he should do. They are all people who have got so much experience about the what is called uh, controlling the ship during a difficult time and now somebody else who has no idea about the boat and the, uh, how to control the ship they come and they give the order you do like this be careful about that one where is the master and demanding for somebody else where is the master we have to talk to master as if this person is not doing his job properly where is the master play the men play the men be a man, be courageous, do your best and do not fail in courage. As if this person is losing his courage, he says, don't lose courage, be courageous, be a man, be smart. So he is ordering, someone comes there and ordering him what he should do. So something which Boson does not like. I pray now, keep below. So, and Boston, as we know here, is just a straightforward man. He does not care about whoever it is there in front of him. He just cares only about his duty, his business. He says immediately, I pray now, keep below. So this, uh, here from his words, he does not like that these people interfere in his work. So he says, just leave from here, do not stay here. So you just go to the place where you are supposed to be. You go to your cabin. You stay there. This is not the place for you to come and stand. That is what he says. Pray now. Keep below. I pray. I pray you. I request you. Please go down to the place where you are supposed to be. You are supposed to be in the cabin. When the shipwreck takes place or when some uh, difficult times arouses in the ship, the mariners, they expect that all the people, they be in their correct places, they be in their cabins so that the mariners they can do their duties properly. So the sailors actually whenever they are whatever be the conditions as I said in the uh, probably about the place where it is taking place this uh, deep sea we said they are not afraid so long as they are in the deep sea they are not afraid whatever the strength of the wind and all those things. So, they are the people and here a person comes there and says, be a human being, be a man, don't lose courage. So that is something which he didn't like it. Sailors like the passengers to keep down inside the ship, in their cabins. So he says, I don't care who you are, please go down to your place, go down to the cab cabin. Where is the master person? Antonio speaks there. Again, the same question is asked by another person. Where is the captain? We have to speak to the captain. Boson, do you want to hear him? Can't you hear? I told you something. You can hear the different sounds. What all things are happening? 
can you see what are things happening there do you not hear him you can hear the sound of captain probably captain is giving orders from different places can you hear if you can hear him why should ask me about this so can do you not hear him you mar our labor then he says you mar our labor you spoil our labor you are becoming a hindrance for us neither you are doing any job nor you are letting others to do the job so therefore i once again i want you please go back to your place keep your cabins you do assist the stop so that is what he says keep your cabins if you don't go to the cabin and remain there you are supporting the wind you are actually digging your own graves digging your own grave means actually you are interfering or you are supporting the storm or making the difficulties more we are not letting you are not letting us to do our duties properly if we don't do our duties properly naturally you are inviting your own death so if you want if you don't want to die then get by to your cabin keep your cabin you do assist the storm you are assisting the storm therefore i request you to go by gonzalo nay good be patient gonzalo as we said a good counselor an honest counselor an old man he is actually a very pleasant jovial person he takes things quite lightly even during the time of that shipwreck he doesn't lose so much courage he says good master my good sir be patient be patient let him say whatever as sebastian antonio alonso all these people are speaking rudely probably he says be patient be calm don't worry so you don't take their words so seriously be cool be patient and he says boson replies when the sea is what does this mean one statement is given when the sea is he says i can be quiet i can be calm i can be patient only if the sea becomes calm my duty is now here to control the ship and i cannot be at the patience unless the ship is kept uh, steady unless everyone is calm and quiet here on the ship i cannot be patient so i cannot be patient unless the sea becomes calm and quiet so that is what is meant by when the sea is so hence therefore go away so he says i cannot be calm i cannot be impatient i cannot be peaceful unless the sea is calm therefore i request get out from here hence go away hence meaning here is go away therefore you go away from here just don't interfere in our activities what case this roars for the name of king to carry silence troubles not so what does he mean to say that one now what case this roars roars actually what does it mean winds and waves now you imagine a condition just recently we had a super cyclone taking place uh, in the coastal areas of orissa and all those areas so we saw that such a drastic disaster was created there so if such disaster is created do they just care as they come there are some vip staying there no they don't care they don't care whether it is whoever be the person who is staying there if the wind comes on the way be it, be it chief minister or prime minister or whoever may be there maybe a king maybe a very wealthy person standing there they don't care they have no care for any of those people wind and storm does not look the social status of any person they don't say okay this is a king standing who is right in front of me so i shall just skip him no they don't care that is what he says what care these roars for the name of a king so they just don't care be you you may consider you are a king you are a great person that is only for you at present if you ask me i don't care about you unless i i first i care of i care for my life what matters for me is my life so here therefore he says i don't care about you therefore i request you back to the cabin to cabin silence troubles not just last warning for you so it is given 
I request you, please be silent and back to your place. Back to the cabin. I don't want to see you again here right in front of me. So you may be king that is there on the land there. So all of you, please back to the place. I have no time to listen to your stories and none of those things. Therefore, I request you, be quiet and leave the place. What gave these rose for the name of king? To cabin, silence, trouble us no. Do not trouble us. Do not interfere in our activities. That is what he says. They don't care about, when I say they, the wind, the storms, the water. They just don't care about who the person is standing right in front of them. The social status, they don't care. What care these rose for the name of king? To cabin, silence, trouble us no. So he says, just don't trouble us. We are doing our duty, just don't allow us to, just don't trouble us. Don't be a hindrance to my duties. That is what he says. So he just does not care about the person who is there, who is talking to him. That is one thing what we are noticing with the character of person. He just very cool, common person. Then Gonzalo. Good, yet remember whom thou hast abroad. Just remember, even though you may say what are the uh, your temperament and all those things, your care and all those things, it is shown. But at the same time, but remember who you have on board as passengers. Who are the passengers on the board? Please keep in mind. They are VVIPs. That is what he says. For them, the master, the king and all those things, they are very important for them. For Gonzalo, he is a counsellor. So naturally it is his duty to take care of those people, giving advice, counselling. So naturally he says, just remember who are the people on the board. So they are all the so-called VIPs, very important persons. So naturally you have to take care of those people. Boson replies, none that I more love than myself. See the statement how it is used. None that I more love than myself. In our common language if we use it. No one whom I love or whom I care more than my love. There is no one for me. For me the most important person at present is myself. I have to take care of myself. I have to protect myself. I have to save my life. Then only I care for whoever the person who is on the other side. So he says... None that I more love than myself. Here the person whom I love most is myself. Then only the king and queen and whoever it is there for me. You are a counsellor. So now he is reminding you, you are a counsellor. Fit for giving counsels. Let us see what does he means by that one. He is a statesman. What is that? He is a statesman. A person who gives orders, counsels, guides. His duty is to advise. Now he is asking, are your advice any use for us now? Is it useful? When you say, when you give command against this storm, against this wind, can you give orders to the uh, violent storm? The waves which are rising up, can you give orders and can you control them? If you can command these elements to silence, and walk the peace of the present. So if you can give command to this violent sea, violent storm, the waves which are rising so high up above, by your advice, if you can control these things, I do believe, I accept you. If that is the case, I will follow you. I will follow your instructions. That is the challenge what he gives to the persons. So what is some of the words you have to take here? You are a counsellor. If you can command these elements, what are these elements? When you are speaking about the elements, five elements we speak about it. Something very important for the existence of this universe as well. What are those five elements? Who knows elements? So fire, earth, air, water, space, ether, that is what we call it. So these are the five elements. So you, can you give commands to these elements? Can you give orders? Just precisely this water which is right in front of you. Can you give the command and make them to obey you? If you can manage 
being a counselor and you give order for these people or this not people no, not the people give order to these elements existing there and if they follow you naturally i will follow you will not hand a rope more so i will not hand a more i will not touch myself on any of those ropes means ropes actually when they are uh, referring the sails which are attached to that one so they are removing some of the ropes they are controlling removing some of the sails from there probably you can look at the ships different sails which are available there which are the sails which are kept there to control to attract the wind and they are the ones which is carrying forward the ship so now they are removing some of these sails so that the direction in which they want the ship to move they can make it happen so we will not hand a rope more we will not handle any more handle hand means handle handle a rope more use your authority so you use your authority following your command let them follow that will be and if you cannot do that one, you have to do only one thing either you give the command and control the sea or if you cannot do that one give thanks you have lived so long what is the warning is given give thanks to god that you have lived so long as someone said now the gift of 2020 if you say the biggest achievement what you have got not financially anything if you survive this year that is the biggest grace you have received amidst this so much what is called the problems and all this uh, troubles what we are facing now if you still survive that is a great achievement the greatest achievement what we have got during this year we can call it in the same way he says you sit and thank god that you have survived up to now that is what he says give thanks you lived so long and make yourself ready in your cabin for the mischance of the hour if it so hap so what is that for some all you go back to the cabin thank god for all the good things you have achieved so far the biggest achievement is that you have survived now and pray to god pray to god for what the misfortunes that may happen so and make yourself ready in your cabin for the mischances of the hour if so it happen so if it happens misfortunes probably that no guarantee the next hour you will be surviving you may die prepare for a happy death that is what he says so prepare yourself for a happy death if the misfortune the misfortune that is what is going to happen misfortune mischance that is misfortune that is going to hap hap means happen the misfortune that is going to happen to you pray god pray to god that you may survive that is only one thing you can do for yourself so go to your cabin and pray to god so that you may be saved from the misfortune that is about to happen to you cheerly good hearts and he just doesn't care about the uh, this people and he just goes in your his own way and he speaks to his companions his sailors cheerly cheerly good hearts supporting words so just telling encouraging the people so you come on my dear friends just don't about uh, don't care about these people these are our uh, disturbance for us let us be disciplined with our go let us continue with our go be cheerful be steady out of our way and he just gives order just get out of our way i don't have the time to uh, discuss about this kind of things you just be out of our way go back to the place and he moves out of that place so this is so far what is the conversation that is taking place between these two three people sebastian antonio gonzalo and boson boson a very rough person appears there a person who is determined who is perfectly aware of his own duty a dedicated person now in this context let's say gonzalo makes a comment gonzalo makes a statement what is his statement i have great comfort from this fellow now looking at this boson gonzalo says i have full confidence in this person so long as this person is there i am sure that i am safe nothing is going to happen to us he is a perfect man a person who can control us through this all these difficult times so long as this person is there i am sure 
no harm will happen to us that is probably one of the biggest compliment what we can receive from anybody if somebody says so and so is here i have no problem i am fully prepared i am so happy that no danger will happen to us almost like a uh, father and the child that confident a child has got full confidence in his father full trust in that so he says so long as i am in the hands of my father i am safe in the same way this person says so long as this person is present here on this ship i have full confidence that is what i have great comfort from this fellow confidence in this officer so long as this officer is present on this ship i have no problem at all i have full confidence that i will survive but if this person dies on this ship then sure that we all of us will die on this ship me think he has no drowning mark upon him and looking at this person i don't see that on his face it is not written that this person will not die this person it is not written that this person will die in the water so his death or his fate is written on the land there so this is not a person who is to die in this water and if he doesn't die in this water then we will survive so that is what he said me think he has no drowning mark upon him i don't think that this person has got a drowning mark this is uh, let us say human nature what we are seeing when we see people we judge people just looking at the appearance of that this person we make a comment this person is going to be like this this person is going to be like look at his face look at his eyes this person is like this do we not make it like this comments this is common to us this is human nature actually just we see things we just first sight and we make comments how many of us do make this comments we make so many comments about different people different teachers even as i am taking this so many comments you may be making this fellow is and probably is it probably first time i'm teaching quite many students so probably attending my first class and what all judgments you may be making there this is human nature or let us say this person is alluding something he is making a comment he alludes to the old saying that is a probably as saying is there in olden time making some comments there so he alludes to the old saying seven men are born to be hanged this old say this person is born this person is like this he is born to be hanged there are person those people whose death is precisely when it is written it is what is called uh, it is permanently written in, on his face that this person will have to be hanged this is a wrong teaching actually but that was a wrong belief they had they were believing that one so looking at this complexion his so upon him his complexion is perfect gallows perfect gallows probably you might have heard this word gallows what is this gallows i am sure that you have heard this word since you are not right in front of me i shall not ask you which was which was the context in which you have heard this one some of you will say i heard it in class 1 or that movie or this one but not that one you have heard it last year there was a scene in which we were saying about the uh, what is called uh, merchant of venice when you were studying this drama there is a scene in which that uh, Shylock's mother about Shylock's mother a reference is made there and when he says that uh, when he uh, what is it the story of wolf and all those wolf was going to be killed and those that uh, soul disappears from him and enters into the womb of Shylock's mother from the gallows it disappears so gallows a pillar or something uh, post or something where people are meant for hanging you can see the image there the image just hanging there from where people are just hanging so meant for executing the human beings so gallows and guillotines guillotines probably during the french revolution time and all those things we, this word was very common there guillotine people were made to uh, lie on the ground and a blade is there so big one huge one it is just drop and your head get separated so be let it but this here is gallows gallows men were hanging people you hang there and you die that is typically what we speak that now he says looking at the face of this person he feels that this person's face typically it is written there 
that this person is meant for meant to be hanged there is not this person's face it is not written that he will get drowned in the water and die that is not is written there so it is a perfect gallows stand fast good faith now he says he is making a request stand fast good faith to his hanging so this faith what is written on his head it is to be hanged on the gallows and he is praying that that a faith which is written on him let it remain steady that let us not change o kind faith is praying to faith o kind faith stand firm be firm and allow him to be hanged on the gallows so let faith remain steady let it not change his faith now we say there are certain context people believing in faith this is meant like this i am meant for that one. so no faith can change so he is praying to faith let it not change if the faith changes in the case of boson all their faith will change that is what gonzalo says how does it so if he is meant to be hanged on this on the dry land that means he will not die in this water if he will not die in this water all these people will be surviving if he dies here everyone will die so that is what gonzalo speaks stand for us good faith to his hanging make the rope of his destiny our cable for our own that little advantage what is that now i said on a post a rope is hanging on which people are hanging so now he says the rope which is meant for hanging bosom the rope that is on the gallows that is which is to be used for hanging this particular person remain there and that if it remains there that rope can be a cable that may take us from this troublesome water to the land that is what he says make a rope of his destiny our cable this the cable by which we can save our son is the rope that is meant for hanging him so if he is meant for drowning uh, meant for drowning in this water then we will have no safety we will die in this water that is what he says so rope of his destiny our cable for our own that little advantage our credit has no advantage whoever we are we may be counselor we may be uh, the princess we may be the king whoever may be our faith has no value here only if we have to survive pray to god this person will not die in this water the moment he dies in this water we also will die if he survives we also will survive so our survival depends on this person now if it is said that if his faith is meant for dying on a dry land then we all are safe if the faith changes and if he dies in this water then we also will die that is what gonzalo speaks about a very positive comments about boson i hope it is clear to you so what he says only if boson survives the tempest then we will survive if he dies we also will survive so meaning to say that he is a person who can save us from this tempest so long as he does his duty properly we are all safe we have nothing to worry that is what he says so stand fast stand fast good faith to his hanging make the rope of his destiny our cable for our own that little advantage if he be not born to be hanged our care is our case is miserable unless he was born to be hanged on this dry land our case could have been a different case our case could have been miserable one now it is meant that again by to the fate you have to see it is the belief that this person was born to be hanged now what logic make this gonzalo to speak that this person was meant for dying to be hanged what come in what right you have to speak there he is equally free as you are so how can you say that this person is meant for hanging to be hanged so his birth to be hanged that is what he says to be hanged is 
our safety. If he was born to be drowned in the water, then our case could have been a miserable one. I hope it is clear. So you can see the not what is given there also. It is very clearly mentioned about that paragraph. I have great uh, confidence in this person. I feel comforted by the presence of this man. I think there are no signs to show he will be drowned. That is what he said. There is no sign that this person will die in this water. So long as this, it, uh, his appearance shows that he will die by hanging. Then he prays to the faith. O oh, faith, do not change the mode of death and let them, let him die by hanging. Only his destiny which is to die by hanging can save us. Because we are helpless creatures here. Our survival depends on this person. And the conversation just moves on. Boson. Down with the topmast, ya, yeah, lower, lower. Bring her to try with the main course. So he just goes on addressing to the mariners. Just bring down. Now these are all the words which Shakespeare uses so that he, we can create an atmosphere. The most important thing is that creating an atmosphere. Yes. Imagine that you are literally facing a shipwreck. Imagine that you are there on the ship there. Just yes, you are one of the passengers there and that feel it is bringing to us. The fear which is coming. The different type of noises which you are hearing. Down with the top mass. Top mass is taken down to give the ship lighter weight. So all the mass is taken so that ship become light. It will move slowly. Wait and to enable her to bring to keep with the land, keep off the land, keep off the land, away from the land. If we are during the storm, the mariners prefer that the ship is in the deep water, not in the shallow area of the coastal area, not to the not close to the seashore. If it is near to the shore, naturally there is a tendency or uh, chance that it will get stuck in the sand there. Therefore, they don't want that one. And then they hear this noise, a cry, a big sound from these people there. A plague upon this howling. They are louder than the weather or our office. Just so noisy these people are there. And we can imagine, even when we see the uh, movie Titanic, the fear in the mind of the people. The moment they come to know that the ship is about to sink, the confusion, the trouble, the turmoil that is going on within the mind of the people, naturally they will go on shouting and yelling and howling. And he says, their voice is so loud. It is louder than the waves, the sound of the waves, the sound of the roar, roaring of the waves or the storm. It is so loud that we are not able to listen to the commands. I am not able to give the command to my mariners. They are not able to listen to my, uh, what is called commands. As a result, it is becoming a real hindrance for us. It is becoming a real trouble for us. A plague upon this howling. They are louder than the weather. Our office, our duty. We are not able to continue with our duty because of the noise that is created by these people. I hope what I said so far is clear to you. I am going to conclude for today's class, hoping that so far what I said is clear. I expect that you revise this one and this is a portion which unless you make it clarify all the doubts daily, it will not be very easy for you to understand. The words which are used here, these are not simple words, the Shakespearean language is used there, so therefore you have to understand each word, each meaning you have to understand. daily. You have to read it up, understand the class. Okay? See you in the next class.